What is going on, everybody? Uh, good afternoon, Wednesday afternoon. Your boy, the bad diggity diesel, back with another video about the New York Giants. And in this video, we're going to talk about exactly what Joe Judge said about how the offense is going to look under Jason Garrett coming up in the 2020 season, which, of course, hopefully we have football in the 2020 season. But it looks like we're progressing towards that area. So hopefully everything starts on time. Hopefully we don't miss any games and we'll just have to figure out exactly what's going on. Obviously, we're having virtual meetings, virtual trainings. I don't know how effective those are going to be, but this is what they're doing at the moment. So when Joe Judge was asked about how the New York Giants offense would look under Jason Garrett, he pretty much said schematically it's going to look a lot like the Dallas Cowboy offense, which what does that mean for the New York Giants? I think that there's a lot of misconception on what the Cowboys did. I know a lot of people that aren't familiar with Jason Garrett or don't watch the Cowboys all the time think that really they're an air raid offense and that they just had Dak Prescott throwing the ball all over the field. Well, that's just not the truth. As a matter of fact, since 2016, no running back in the NFL has carried the ball more than Ezekiel Elliott. Ezekiel Elliott actually had the second most carries in the league last year, so they definitely rely on Ezekiel Elliott a lot. And this is also considering that Ezekiel Elliott missed six games due to his suspension in 2017. And he still has had over 100 more carries than Todd Gurley, who was second in this aspect. So what that means is that Saquon Barkley is going to be busy. There's no doubt about that. And then, of course, the Dallas Cowboys offensive line was much stronger than ours. We're relying on a lot of young players. We're going to rely on Andrew Thomas. No doubt about that. Very big. Uh, Will Hernandez had a rough season last year at left guard. I don't know how much that was Will Hernandez, how much that was Nate Solder. Nate Solder there's probably going to move over to the right side and share time with uh, Cam Fleming. We don't know who our center is going to be. Maybe Matt Parrott is right tackle at some point this year. Maybe Shane Lemieux. Maybe Nick Gates is our center. We really don't know. So the Giants offensive line is still kind of a work in progress. They don't really know where everybody's going to be. So that may take a little bit away from Saquon's production until the Giants figure out the unit that they want and they can build some chemistry and some unification together. At that point, I think you're going to see Saquon Barkley really take off. I do love what the Giants did with their offensive line. But Saquon Barkley is going to be used a lot according to uh, this, the offensive schematic uh, scheme. Schematic scheme, what am I talking about? The offensive scheme that we're going to be uh, running here with New York. So, uh, you know, with the Giants. So obviously, Saquon Barkley is going to be a big part of this and I think this is why a lot of Giants fans wanted uh, to upgrade the offensive line not only to protect Daniel Jones but to have an effective running game to control the clock to win the time of possession this type of stuff so uh, that's good news also We've talked about this before. Evan Ingram's going to be a big part of this offense, even with guys like Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup. Uh, Jason Witten, who is about as old as I am, was targeted the ninth most times of any tight end in the NFL. So that means that Evan Ingram, if he stays healthy, could have a big productive season for the Giants, which I think a lot of us are expecting, including the New York Giants, which is probably why they picked up the fifth-year option. There's no doubt about this. Evan Ingram's a very talented tight end, not a great blocking tight end. Receiving tight end, yes, has a lot of, uh, you know, physical gifts. He's very fast. You know, he runs good routes. He's dr dropped some passes uh, in the past, so hopefully he can clean that up. But again, obviously, um, he's going to be a big part of this offense, which again, your tight end, your running back, this is how you control the clock. And as you know, Dallas has done a great job of controlling the clock over the past four years since they've got Ezekiel Elliott there. And that's kind of what the New York Giants are going to do. Now, one thing that they have done in Dallas, which is probably why people think Dak throws the ball a over the field is Dak threw a lot of passes over 20 yards. I think he threw 76. It was in the 70s. I'm not exactly sure. Completing a little less than half of them, but I believe that was also the most in the NFL, right near the top of quarterbacks throwing passes over 20 yards in the air, which is something that I didn't even realize because I always say Dak is a dink and dunk guy, but he obviously threw the ball very deep. So again, that's high risk, high reward. Kind of like what Kevin Gilbride used to do with Eli Manning uh, early in his career, which is why Eli Manning's completion percentage and interception suffered because, again, those aren't really, you know, um, what, what am I trying to say? They're not passes that you're going to complete most of the time. You know, they're high risk passes. So that's not something, they're not safe passes. Um, so. Again, this is probably what the Giants are going to do. You're going to see a lot of running. You're going to see a lot of play-action passes going deep down the field and utilizing the tight end, which, again, Dallas has had a very effective offense uh, for the last four years pretty much since they got Zeke and Dak, and that's how they've run their offense. So the New York Giants plan on doing the same type of thing here. The biggest difference between Dallas and the Giants is that offensive line because, honestly, I don't think Dak is any better than Daniel Jones. I really don't, and I don't think that – 
uh, you know, Ezekiel Elliott's better than Saquon Barkley, and I certainly don't think Jason Witten is better than Evan Ingram, okay? But the big thing there is the offensive line, the ability to protect Dak, the ability to open up holes for Ezekiel Elliott, the ability to push forward and get those yards. And, of course, a lot of that is Ezekiel Elliott. Zeke doesn't lose a lot of yards when he carries. We all know that Saquon Barkley does have a tend to dance around in the backfield, and he's got to get away from that habit. Part of that is the blocking's been really bad, but Zeke is very good at going forward. Saquon Barkley's also got to do that. So, you know, implementing the Dallas Cowboys offense here could be very effective, but it's all going to depend uh, and as my Giants fans say, those hogs up front, hopefully we can get some some push in front of Saquon Barkley and Daniel Jones to protect him, and we can do what Dallas did on offense, which is control the clock, get first downs, convert third downs, and score some points. Anyway, that's all I got for this video. Hope you guys have a great rest of your Wednesday. Until the next time, it is the Bad Diggity Dizzle, and I am gone. Peace!